Theory Legend. Welcome back to another chilling tale from the shadows of urban legend. Today, we delve into the horrifying events that unfolded surrounding a sinister story that has captivated and terrified audiences for decades. Join me, Legend, as we uncover the truth behind this chilling tale from its sinister origins to the haunting aftermath. The house on Ocean Avenue was a grand structure, standing proud and serene on Long Island. It was the home of Butch, the oldest of five children born to a seemingly well-to-do man and his wife. To outsiders, the family seemed to embody the American dream. Butch's father had a successful job at his father-in-law's car dealership, providing a comfortable upper-middle-class lifestyle. Yet, beneath the surface, the household simmered with tension and unspoken pain. Butch was born on September 26, 1951. From the beginning, the weight of his father's expectations bore down on him. His father was a domineering figure, his temper explosive, his hands sometimes violent. Butch's mother, ever the peacemaker, tried to shield her children from the worst of it, but the damage was done. Butch, in particular, felt the brunt of his father's wrath. The nickname Butch seemed almost ironic intended as a term of endearment. It became a badge of his father's disappointment. As a child, Butch was overweight and painfully shy. At school, he was an easy target for bullies, his gentle nature seen as weakness. The constant teasing and physical torment only deepened fractures at home. Butch retreated into himself, the anger festering, his heart hardening against the world. In a desperate attempt to help him, his parents took him to see a psychiatrist. But Butch, defiant and convinced that he needed no help, refused to engage. The therapy sessions went nowhere, the chasm between father and son widening. His father, exasperated and at a loss, turned to material solutions, showering his son with expensive gifts. It was a futile effort, a plaster on a gaping wound. As he entered his teenage years, Butch's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He lashed out at, at his father, at schoolmates, at anyone who crossed his path. By the time he was 17, he was using LSD and heroin, the drugs providing a fleeting escape from the turmoil inside him. His father, in a misguided attempt to instill responsibility, got him a job at the dealership. But Butch's performance was abysmal, his wages disappearing into the black hole of his addictions. Despite the dysfunction at home, the family tried to maintain a facade of normalcy. They attended church and their home was adorned with religious symbols. In 1973, they installed a statue of St. Joseph on their front lawn, a desperate plea for protection and peace. Around the same time, Butch handed out statuettes of the saint to his co-workers, a hollow gesture that did little to mask the chaos within. But the pressure continued to build. His father was relentless in his criticism, and Butch's resentment simmered dangerously close to the surface. In one heated argument, Butch grabbed a shotgun and threatened him. The incident was a chilling prelude to the horrors that would soon unfold. By October 1974, Butch was deeply dissatisfied with his life. Feeling undervalued and underpaid, he concocted a plan to stage a robbery, hoping to steal $20,000 that was entrusted to him to bring to the bank. The plan unraveled quickly when the police questioned him, and his father's interrogation ended with Butch threatening to kill him. The tension in the house was unbearable, the air thick with unspoken dread. In the early hours of November 13, 1974, the fragile veneer of normalcy shattered. Butch, armed with a 35 caliber Marlin rifle, moved through the darkened house with deadly purpose. His parents were the first to die, the shots ringing out like a macabre symphony. He then turned his attention to his siblings, methodically ending their lives as they slept. Dawn, Allison, Mark, and John Matthew each met the same fate, their dreams forever silenced. After the slaughter, Butch showered, disposed of his bloody clothes, and went to work as if it were just another normal day. He made a show of calling home, expressing concern when no one answered. By evening, 
He had crafted a story about discovering his family's bodies, sending shockwaves through the small community. The police, initially taken in by his tale of a mob hit, soon saw through the facade. Butch's story crumbled under scrutiny and within a day he confessed to the murders. He claimed that demonic voices had driven him to kill, a chilling detail that would take on a life of its own in the years to come. The true horror of what happened on Ocean Avenue was just beginning to unfold. As the news spread, so did the rumors of supernatural forces at play. The house became infamous, the dark history inspiring countless books and films. But behind the legend of the Amityville Horror lies the tragic story of a deeply troubled young man and the unimaginable violence that erupted from his tortured soul. The town of Amityville reeled from the shock of the murders. The DeFeo family's massacre became the talk of Long Island. The grisly details whispered in hushed tones. The once peaceful house on Ocean Avenue stood as a silent witness to the unspeakable violence that had erupted within its walls. Butch's confession sent ripples through the community. He claimed he had heard voices that commanded him to kill his family. His chilling insistence added a layer of macabre fascination to an already horrifying crime. The press latched onto the story and soon tales of demonic possession began to circulate. In the wake of the murders, the house stood empty, a ghostly reminder of the tragedy. But in December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz moved in with their three children, hoping to build a new life. They were drawn to the large colonial house and striking views of the Amityville River. What they did not know was that their new house would soon become the center of one of the most infamous hauntings in American history. The Lutz family's ordeal began almost immediately. They claimed to experience a series of disturbing and inexplicable events. George, the patriarch, felt an unseen force pressing down on his chest rendering him immobile. Kathy too felt a sinister presence lurking in the shadows, watching her every move. The children complained of icy cold temperatures in their rooms despite the thermostat being set to a comfortable level. As the days turned into weeks, the paranormal activity intensified. Doors slammed shut on their own, objects moved inexplicably, and a feeling of dread hung heavy in the air. The family began to see strange apparitions, including glowing red eyes staring at them from the darkness. Desperate for help, the Lutzes turned to a priest, Father Ray, to bless the house. But even the presence of the priest seemed to enrage the entity haunting the home. Father Ray heard a voice commanding him to get out and felt an intense wave of malevolence wash over him. Terrified and at their wit's end, the Lutzes fled the house in the middle of the night, leaving behind all their belongings. They claimed that the house was possessed by the demonic forces and that they feared for their lives. To this day, the events that transpired at 112 Ocean Avenue remain shrouded in mystery and controversy. Skeptics dismissed the Lutzes' claims as a hoax, pointing to several inconsistencies in their story. For example, details about the haunting were inconsistent between different retellings. And key elements, like the appearance of the house changing shape or the presence of hidden rooms, were not supported by physical evidence. The Lutz family's story also seemed to evolve over time, with new details emerging in later accounts. Additionally, it was revealed that the Lutzes were facing financial difficulties at the time, raising suspicions that they may have fabricated the haunting to profit from the notoriety. Further adding to the skepticism was the involvement of William Weber, the lawyer who represented Ronald DeFeo Jr., the man who murdered his family in the house before the Lutzes moved in. Weber reportedly came up with the idea of claiming that DeFeo heard demonic voices that drove him to commit the murders, with the promise of getting him out of jail in a few short years. After his plan failed, Weber allegedly convinced the Lutz family to fabricate the haunting, suggesting that he could turn the tragic story into a book and movies, promising fame and fortune. This revelation cast doubt on the authenticity of the Amityville horror story, suggesting that it may have been a carefully orchestrated hoax rather than a genuine paranormal experience. As for the house itself, it still stands on Ocean Avenue, 
its dark history forever etched into its walls. Whether or not it is truly haunted, one thing is certain, the Amityville Horror will continue to captivate and terrify all who dare to learn its secrets. As we conclude our journey into the Amityville Horror, remember to stay safe legends, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Until next time, stay vigilant on the road of legends.